one facility. High-level FBI and CIA officials said none of the 60 to 80 daily threat reports from intelligence sources contain evidence linking the anthrax attacks to Osama bin Laden's terrorist network. This did not stop the mainstream press from trying to blame al-Qaeda. As investigators race to find answers to the recent wave of anthrax terror, we'll look at what investigators are targeting now. <laughs> Since September 11th, Americans have been put on alert. This is so terrible. Investigators are trying to ward off more attacks by dissecting the terrorist plan for September 11th, looking for patterns, methods, associates that could reveal what else terrorists had in mind. It was not something smuggled in from Iraq. It was not something smuggled in from any Middle Eastern country. It was U.S. government ultra-fine granulated weaponized anthrax spores. There was another story that the media absolutely would not touch, the story of Dr. Philip Zak. And it goes back to the U.S. government lab where the anthrax was stored. It was reported that official U.S. government documents in the anthrax investigation showed that Dr. Zak had entered the laboratory where the anthrax used in the letters was kept without proper authorization after having lost his job. Somehow the Bush administration would have the foresight to be on Cipro six weeks prior to the attacks. How convenient. An attack traced back to U.S. government facilities and the president and his staff happen to be taking the antidote before it's even in the mail. Judicial Watch would file suit against the administration for its actions. Well, this is another good example of how certain people consider themselves to be above the rest of us. On September 11th, I think it'll come as a shock to a lot of people, but it's been reported by the New York Times and other major news organizations and confirmed by the White House. The President's office and Vice President's office went on Cipro, the antibiotic that was used to combat uh, anthrax. The White House went on Cipro, it must have known that either an attack was underway or was imminent. It shows you that some people in this country are less than equal and are not treated like the political elites. Nine Eleven was an international intelligence operation that included role players within our own government as well as in the governments of Pakistan, Saudi Arabia and Israel. Each played a compartmentalized role in order to create a climate of fear and confusion. This combined with the evacuation of government offices kept any type of dissent off the radar. It was a time when Americans felt they needed to rally around their leaders and they did. I can hear you. <laughs> The power structure used that unity to pass nightmarish legislation, beginning with the Patriot Act, which was written before 9-11. Homeland Security was in place prior to 9-11 as well. Another piece of this, which is something that uh, has been well known to you all, is that the creation of the Office of Homeland Security was something that was planned even before September 11th. The Bush administration had even written up the plans to invade Afghanistan the week before 9-11. And as a result of a process that involved the CIA, the Department of Defense, the Department of State, the National Security Council, a national security presidential directive was developed and prepared throughout 2001 that was approved by what's called the Principals Committee, which is essentially cabinet level officers involved in national security, on September 4th, 2001. That document was then finalized on September 10th. I think it was focused on al-Qaeda from the very earlier days. We fight a fabled enemy, the likes of which that can never be defeated. The terrorists attacked us and killed 3,000 of our citizens. 
Before we started the Freedom of Jinn in the Middle East, they were... What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on the World Trade Center. Nothing. While an international intelligence cartel wages psychological warfare against we the people on behalf of the global elite. And remember, this is a government that over the years has proven that it can be trusted with these powers. You'd hope, as you mentioned before, that people don't complain about these extra inconveniences because they are simply being put into effect to protect all of us. They masquerade as our saviors while the media glorifies and indemnifies them. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Certainly not a disingenuous filmmaker who would have us believe... The time has come not for a revolution, but a restoration of our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, but most of all, our morality as a people. The question is, will we be able to put our consumerist obsessions aside long enough to make a difference? Can we put down the remote control and hold these tyrants accountable? It's up to us. No more excuses. Okay, it's NBC News. I don't care who it is. 